brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. It's sippin' time. Oh yes, it's sippin' time again. Hello and welcome to this Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. This is a one-hour show that's somewhat mildly entertaining for about 23 minutes. I'm going for 27 today, man. Going for 27. Don't overshoot. I know. You're watching the Olympics. You're getting excited. We are banned in, oh, 11 countries, three states, two counties. Roll Tide. And the dog won't even talk to you anymore because you're an Alabama fan. Uh, This is Made Man Bob. Joining to me today, our good old boy, Harmeet. Howdy. Made Man Maury. Good morning. And good old boy, Alan. Hey, how's everybody out there? Maury and myself, we're with the Bourbon Mafia. Uh, the Bourbon Mafia is a nonprofit organization composed of high end bourbon enthusiasts and industry professionals. With representation in seven states, our members combine a love of bourbon with a passion for charitable work. The group uses their love of our native spirit to raise money for local and national charities through rare bottle auctions and other themed events. I have to just say, though, I, I appreciate the Bourbon Mafia and everything you guys do, but it's not just high-end bourbon you guys appreciate. You like some really pretty scary stuff, too. Yeah, and? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> I, I, I drink scotch, too, and Irish, and, and vodka, and yeah, right. anything else I can get. Plenty of American craft whiskey. Absolutely. A little moonshine here and there, too. Oh, no, never not, because that would be illegal, tisk tisk. Right. <laughs> Our show is also sponsored in part by The Bourbon Review, a quarterly magazine and online source for all things bourbon. You can find them on Facebook or at their website at www.gobourbon.com. Go Bourbon! And also from Fine Spirits in Cooper City, Florida, home of the Enomatic Machines, serving great wines, whiskeys, and other spirits by the glass. You can find them at www.finespirits.net. Thanks, Bob. By the way, I just want to let our listeners know, Cooper City is a suburb of Fort Lauderdale. So if you're in the Miami or Fort Lauderdale area, please come visit us. It's really suburban hell, but we're not that scary. (laughs) (laughs) But the one thing you do have that's quite unique is the ability to taste spirits by the uh, sip or by the pour yeah, yeah, on we the do, enomatic uh, machines, which I've never seen anybody have an enomatic with uh, scotch and bourbon uh, we, besides we, your store. We were the first in the state. I think there's a couple more people trying to do that now, but I actually take the time to calibrate the machine so you'll actually get your milliliters that you pay for. Well, but there are some stores that are starting to pop up with them, but they're primarily wine, yeah. which is a nice way to try before you buy. But I love the fact that you do both wine and uh, spirits. And spirits, Well, yeah. I've got a water cooler that's got a five-gallon jug full of uh, Jim Beam, but, yeah, that's just me. Uh, well, you know, your taste will eventually improve. <laughs> or he'll die. <laughs> or I'll die. Yeah. Liver. Who needs one? Our sip segments are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, coffee, and today's show is a distiller's takeover show featuring products from the Glen Goyne Distillery. We'll cover some background on the distillery as well as the individual products we'll be tasting. Our samples today were graciously provided to us by Nick Potter and Pedro Martinez from Shaw Ross International. Thanks, Pedro and Nick. And here's a short list of what we're going to be going to discuss today. We've got the Glen Goyne 10, we've got the Glen Goyne 12, we've got the 15-year, we've got the 18-year, and we've got the 21-year. What happened to the 25, man? I didn't get one. (laughs) You did great, brother. (laughs) All right, so not so many thanks then, Nick and Pedro. I don't know, maybe one. One might have come, and I just drank it. So (laughs) it was so good you forgot. All right. Yeah. Today, today we're going over single malt. So, why, why are you doing this to me? You're the one playing it. Come on, come on. <laughs> my, my brother-in-law plays a bagpipe. I'm, there I married go. that white. There I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. All right. And here's how our going to give us a, bl- a brief history of the Glen Glen Distillery. All right. Roll Tide. My brother-in-law is a, a, a fireman who plays. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Okay, Glen Goyne's route. 
Okay, thanks, Bob. Glen Goyne's roots can be traced back to 1833 when George Connell built the first uh, Brunfoot distillery at the site. I love how they say, we're Glen Goyne, but it was Brunfoot distillery first. All these guys talk about the first barn built on their site. That's when we were established. Anyway, one of the original warehouses from that era still stands today. Hence 1833, huh? In 1876, the distillery was sold to the Lang Brothers of Glasgow, who who renamed it the Glen Goyne Distillery. And that comes from the Gaelic word of Glen Goyne, which means uh, the Glen of the Wild Geese. Well, of course it does. Don't you speak Gaelic? Of course. And and Glen means valley. Hence the wild geese on the back of the bottle. Exactly. Nice. Wild goose tastes good. That's all I know. (laughs) To this day, their logo incorporates the images of the geese. Good call, Maury. The distillery was subsequently acquired in 1965 by Robertson and Baxter Group, which later became the Edrington Group. We all know and love these guys. In 1984, the owners became suppliers of whiskeys to the Queen Mother, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's household, household, and the Royal Warrant is featured on the Glen Goyne products. In 2003, Ian McLeod Distillers acquired Glen Goyne Distillery. And Glen Goyne right now is located in the village of Dumgoyne. Alan, do you have anything to say about this? No, but it sounds like something that is anti-Semitic, like Glen Goyim, and I don't like it. <laughs> Glen Go- no. It's, it's, well, it's not <laughs> dumb Goyim, it's, it's dumb Goyim. <laughs> On the West Coast. Leave the rest of us Goyim out of this, smart guy. <laughs> we, we've got a culturally diverse crowd at the, at the radio, yeah. at, the, at, the, at the station today. So, dumb Goyim's on the West Coast near Loch Lomond, north of Glasgow. It's classified as a highland malt, but the distillery sits along the highland line, which is the boundary line between the highland and the lowlands. Their aging warehouse... So that would make it a low highland whiskey. Yeah. Mm. Or Or a high high lowland. lowland. Yeah. A midland, high lowland. Something. They're on the line. They're on the border. Yeah. They get to choose. It actually goes through the, through mm-hmm. the property, the line. That's so, cool. Yeah. Well, their aging warehouse, which is on the property, is on the lowland side. So that's those are the dunnage warehouse, as they call it. And they're doing this old school. The dunnage warehouse has an earthen floor. And so that, that really in, encourages the old school way of uh, uh, aging. You've got the the water source is uh, the Glen Goyne Burn, and it flow, it flows from Dumb Goyne Hill through the distillery grounds to Loch Lomond. They have a six, uh, Glen Goyne operates under a, a set of guiding principles. There's six of them, and they feel that this sets their spirit apart from everyone else. The first principle is their barley is air dried and not peated at all. So there's no peating. They're not doing kill drying. They're doing old school, very old, very long drying of air air drying. The second is patience, which they have no choice because they're doing air drying. The, their stills run at the they slowest. Must, they must be married if they're practicing patience. So. Yeah. And they also have a very slow still, five liters per minute rather than the normal 12 or 15. So it sounds like they've got, um, uh, I guess it's a... Uh, prostate problem too the third the third principle is wood management Glen Goyne has been saw purchased saw palmetto berries that, that helps yeah, yeah saw palmetto <laughs> yeah <laughs> can make it a, a version of gin wait 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 wait, wait, wait. We, 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 we do have the urologist here at the table so he should be able to well, give we, us all we need to know about yes that. absolutely <laughs> so what's what's the normal flow rate five liters per minute with a, with a mini large prostate <laughs> Well, uh, and we've been drinking, folks, in case you can't tell. We enjoy this show. Mm, uh, I what, love what? scotch. I love scotch. <laughs> Scotchy scotch scotch. Here it goes down. Down into my belly. Yes. There's no way you can talk about scotch without drinking scotch. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So are we on principle number three yet? Oh, yeah, it's number three. Wood management. And this is really important. I like the fact that these guys actually do, they pay attention to Listen, it. Listen, don't talk about your personal wood. Let's talk about the Glen Goyne. Glen Goyne's wood. All right. I, I tell my wife wood management is very important, but she doesn't listen. Glen Goyne has been purchasing their sherry cask from the exact same family for over 100 years. So apparently they somebody got something right, and they're sticking with it. The fourth principle is maturation. The casks are matured only three casks high on that earthen floor dunnage warehouse. And the fifth principle is natural color. Although it's legal, Glen Goyne does not add caramel color to any of its whiskeys. And the final principle, number six, is tradition. They've been producing producing whiskey the same way since 1833. Wow. Well, i got to say, I really appreciate the fact that they don't add distiller's caramel. I think it's uh, 
a lack of transparency when some of the other distilleries add it. I think the color, although not affecting taste whatsoever, I think does give you an indication of what the aging process has been like, what the barrels have been like. And a lighter whiskey is a lighter whiskey. But that, that's, that, that's barrel dependent, but the thing is too many people think that color is an indication of quality, and it really isn't. No, but, but you, can, uh, you can obscure that quality by adding caramel. And yeah. I find it ironic that uh, Scotland, that's so traditional, so full of rules, so many things you can and can't do, allows caramel where we don't really traditionally yeah. allow that in the United oh, States. Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely with you. I mean, the SWA is is militant. I mean, at, you can ask John Glazer about the problems he's run into trying to change sure. the most minor things, and they allow you to put a color in, in to alter the color, whereas in, you know, in bourbon country, they don't allow you to add anything other than spirit into a barrel. So That's correct. That, that in and of itself is, is definitely something that... I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to see the natural color because color, you know, again, like we discussed before, doesn't mean doesn't mean that much to me. I don't think like the, the spirits like to be called colored. <laughs> There's only one colored person here. Okay, okay, Alabama I, boy. I'm a person of color. Oh, sorry, person of color. I, I'm a person of India. I'm I'm a, a natural mellow brown. Nice. <laughs> Cafe au lait. You're, from, you're not from the you're wife. Not, the wife likes it. I don't know. My grandmother was an Indian, and uh, you don't talk like her. You know, I think we talked right over the point where we, we should have done the sips ratings. So feather. We, have to, we call that feather, not dot. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll yeah. come back and do the sips ratings in a minute. Cabby, not casino. Clouds and crashing surf, iridescent dunes reflecting by the light of a rising, glowing moon. Seashore mesmerizing, night breeze hypnotizing. We've come across these back roads none too soon. Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet All right, we're back, and we are talking about some fine scotches from the Glen Goyne Distillery. Uh, Harm had just given us some information about the distillery, and now we're going to have good old boy Alan tell us a little bit more about our SIPs ratings. Alan. These ratings are very unique. We will be tasting and discussing these whiskeys and rating them with the SIPs ratings, plus our signature sounds. Here are the ratings now. One, give me a glass of water to wash my mouth out. That's our meat, in case you didn't know. Yeah. I do that every time. Nice. But what the hell else do you have? Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> hmm, interesting. What was this again? Interesting. Let's keep this secret to ourselves. Pour me another, please. That's classified. No one ever says please, man. (laughs) Oh, my. I was unaware anything could be as good as this. Oh, my goodness. Yes. 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 (laughs) Again, that's the sound no one at this table has ever heard. Okay. (laughs) All right. Thanks, Alan. Let's get right into it. Harm's going to introduce our first product, so take it away, Harmie. All right. Uh, The first product we're going to review today is the Glen Goyne 40-Year-Old. Unlike any of the other whiskeys today we're tasting, this is actually at 40% ABV or 80 10 year proof. old, not 40 year old. <laughs> Did I say 4 year old? <laughs> yep. Yep. You said 40. <laughs> have another one. Yep. Have oh, another wow. one. <laughs> you read I the ABV. Swear, yeah. I, swear, I swear I said 10 year old. Yep. We're going to go back to the tape. Yep. All right. So the 10 the, uh, year old is 40% ABV, 80 proof. The blend for this particular single malt is 15% aged in first fill sherry casks, 15% aged in first fill bourbon casks, and 70% in refill casks. Now, they don't tell you which refills, but uh, 
that's what we got. Refilled Indian casks. Indian casks. There you go. So the uh, first off, the color is uh, it's beautiful, pale gold. It was clear, and the nose was sweet. Um, I got a lot of apple and barley. Uh, I think uh, some other people at the table mentioned. Well, I'll let other people do their own reviews. I got apple and barley on that, and I got a little bit of toffee. Good, good amount of sweet toffee on there. The palate was grassy. Uh, I got uh, some ni- nice licorice and other um, spice coming through. A little bit of clove actually with me. Um, when I added the cold water to it, I got more spice, and then the green apple came out. The finish was malty, dry, but not too dry, a little bit light at the end. I thought this was a really very approachable whiskey. There was nothing wrong with it. I, I think any, anyone could appreciate this whiskey, whether you drink Scotch, Irish, American, whatever. This was a great starter whiskey, and I was just so impressed that this was a 10-year-old that tasted this well. I gave it a four, uh, four sips. All right. Excellent. That's classified. Hey, Maury, no. what did you think? So let's keep this a secret. Well, I've got to concur with Harmeet, as much as I hate to admit it. Um, I thought it was extremely pleasant. Uh, I thought it was a great daily sipper. I thought it was an approachable whiskey for almost anybody, not just Scotch drinkers, but I think it's a great intro for American whiskey drinkers and bourbon drinkers. I called it a Scotch for bourbon drinkers. Um, I thought it Definitely. was it was really, really pleasant balanced there was nothing offensive about it um i agree with just about everything harmeet said about the uh uh the tasting and i think that uh it's something that everybody should have in their uh in their back bar i too gave it a solid four sips that's classified all right now what would you think i think this is one of the best aperitif whiskeys that i've tried in a long while uh, I've never been one to believe that older whiskeys are better. And this is just lovely. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I've tasted through the range. But you know what? After going through the range and coming back to the 10-year-old, not only is it a great aperitif whiskey, this is a whiskey you can enjoy all night if you're with the right company, not like I am now. Now, now I, yeah, thanks. Well, I agree. It drinks like a much more mature whiskey. It doesn't, a lot of people will turn their nose up at a 10-year-old scotch. Mm. But the fact is that it really drinks very nicely in uh, whiskey mature beyond its uh, and e- years. Even if you're not with the right company, just just add a little bit more to your glass, and the, the company will be improved. Yeah, I mean, I've, some of the best whiskeys I've had are not 20 or 30 years old, or are young whiskeys. I mean, there's a lot to be said, especially uh, with Iowa's. Um, Alan's really the one that turned me on to, to younger Iowa's, and they're an entirely different beast altogether. You know, a six or eight year old Iowa is apparently compared to a 15 or a 20 year old. I mean, it's, it, I mean, they're entirely different. So, what's your sips? On a visual level, I swirl the whiskey around in my Glen Carn glass and I'm watching the legs develop. And the legs are coming down the glass beautifully, uh, sort of like Betty Grable legs. But what that tells you is there are a lot of fusel oils in the whiskey and it's those oils that hold the flavor and the taste. And this 10-year-old really has it all. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. It's uh, 80 proof. And, you know, who knows what it would taste like if it was a little bit uh, stronger at 83. But I can tell you, I think they've really hit a, a pinnacle with this one. All right. What's your rate? How many sips do you give it? I think I'd have to give this four and a half. Right, there's well, no half sips, my friend. It's four. <laughs> okay, I'll give it four because there's more to come. There you go. Yeah, I agree. With, I, I agree with Alan on one one particular point. Um, yeah, it, it drinks beyond its age. It, it's got a great mouth feel to it. Um, but I, I would like to see this. All the other ones we tried in this range were 43 ABV. This is 40, which doesn't sound like a a big difference, and, and theoretically it's not. But I would like to try this at a higher ABV. Maybe forty three or forty five. Um, I want a cask strength version. I, yeah, I well, you know, there's you know, let's face it, the guys that are at this table that are on this show are cask strength fiends, um, pretty much to a man. Um, I prefer cask strength because it allows me to taste it. Number one, the way that God made it. And number two, it allows me to bring it down to whatever level I prefer that day, and that changes from day to day with me. So I'd rather have the higher ABV just to see what it really came out like. 
Um, but you know, I, I I think it was a good solid a good solid whiskey. I really couldn't say a bad thing about it, and I gave it a four. All right, unanimous four <laughs> sips. And Bob, I just echo that. I, I we don't really know why they chose to do forty uh, percent ABV. Whether that was just try to keep the price down as their entry level, as yeah. sometimes we see. But I agree that uh, for a couple dollars more, I think it'd be well worth at least keeping the proof in line with the others. I think when Angus was filling the tank, maybe. He nodded off a little bit and a little too much water went in maybe that was it <laughs> but i agree with you i think this wine could uh this wine wow this scotch could only drink. improve uh, uh with another couple points mm. on uh abv well speaking of a couple more points on abv and a little more age we'll have maury uh tell you some about our next product okay thank you bob our next product is the Glen Goyne 12 year old scotch single malt whiskey it is clocking in at 43 percent as will the next uh, four whiskeys we're going to try today this one was a 2013 gold medal winner at the san francisco world spirits competition uh, in terms of the blend we're going to now see a uh, trend here 20 percent first fill sherry casks as opposed to 15 prior 20% first fill bourbon casks and again 60% refill without a clear breakdown this has a little bit more color it's definitely got a rich golden color to it on the nose I get some honey I get a little bit of coconut and a little bit of wood on the palate it's a very nice uh, mouthfeel. I think it's got more body than the 10. Uh, I think there's a little bit more uh, maltiness that comes through. There's definitely notes of toffee, apple, ginger, and a little bit of shortbread. The finish has very little sherry, uh, light, kind of a light sherry note and a light uh, bit of oak and spice. I thought it was a very nice whiskey, but to be honest, I'm not sure that it added much over the 10-year-old. And... Um, I would say that although I liked it, uh, I didn't like it as much as the 10. And I think if you factor in price and value, which has got to cost more, um, I think for the money, the 10 is really the, the sweet spot. So I gave it a solid three sips. Um, Interesting. Wouldn't pour it out. But uh, what would you pour out? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> You ever see you ever see the movie Bottle Shock when the guy goes crazy and starts drinking out of the spit bucket? Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're not saying anyone here's done that, but I'm I've looking seen at it. At the- <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, trust me. If anybody's seen it, Alan's seen it. Well, I'll tell you my thoughts on this twelve year old. I I think it's absolutely dynamic. The explosion in the mouth, the mouth feel, the really really good balance to it. I don't think. Uh, that this deserves anything less than the five, at least from my personal flavors, because all of us... Stop, stop, stop! (laughs) The sound Alan's wife has never made. Yeah. Not when he's home. I think... (laughs) (laughs) I think this is is super terrific. Really one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. Here you go. Here's another more than 12. I... I, uh, well, she's made it just when the pool man's there. Yeah, yeah that's all right. <laughs> and he's a nice guy. Oh, he is. A hundred bucks a month, man. He earns that. All right, kids. You, you. I, I, I'm just shocked to be at this table. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm shocked. For any of the listeners out there that have heard this show before, they are now yeah. you know swerving their cars or, or yeah. falling off of their chair. All right. Just look. Let, up. let me say something. Yes, you need to say this, something. This twelve-year-old. If this was a twelve-year-old boy, this would be the kind of boy you let live. Let me tell you, my brother, he let his twelve-year-old boys live, but he made a mistake because they became sixteen-year-old boys. Well, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Look, it, this is almost a teenager here, this twelve-year-old, and this is the type of kid you want to have in your house. Yeah, absolutely, this is, a, this is a good kid. This oh, this is a beautiful twelve-year-old. Um, I what Maury was talking about the honey and the, the oak I got, but what really got me right away was coconut, which was surprising because it's only twenty percent uh, bourbon fill, and you know that coconut note generally comes from American casks. So I wonder what the refill is like. It's but because when I when I first smelled it, it was like sweet coconut and and the lemon and almost a little bit of cocoa coming out. The refill it's hundred percent plywood, I believe. <laughs> there you go. A distinct note of Home Depot. 
But uh, anyway, this I just love the nose. I keep coming back to it. The the fla- the palate was dead on what Maury was saying with the toffee and the orange and the shortbread. And it's got a uh, great weight to it. I want to almost give it a five, but I think that the oak was a little bit heavy for me on this one. They say light. Uh, I mean, uh, Maury said light oak. I gave it more medium. Um, it's not quite a five, but it's close. I'm going to give it a four. Four sips. All right. That's classified. Yeah, I've got to. I've got to agree with you. Um, you know, for me, it's it's a four as well. Um, but I'm I'm with Maury on this one. Uh, it's a great whiskey. The extra two years and the extra ABV didn't bump it up as much as I would like. See, I, I disagree with both of you. I, I think yeah. Well, and and that's you know, and that's it. Like, like I told you when I tried I, this the first time, that was my first thought. Today, sitting here now. I think they're much closer than they were the first time I tried them side by side. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, again, you're talking two years and you're talking three points in in, in ABV. That that's not a, a, a big difference. So I really am probably over expecting a big difference. I think it's an excellent whiskey. Um, apples, uh, been a, a bit of shortbread, a little bit of citrus. Um, the sherry notes are a little bit more pronounced. Obviously, uh, you're, you're picking that up. But twenty uh, overall- percent first fill. Overall, you know, a, a good solid whiskey. Um, you know, I trust me. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't cry if you handed me this one as opposed to the ten. Um, if I was paying for it, I might pay for the ten quicker than I'd pay for the twelve. I, I have no idea what the retail yeah, price I don't on either. these is. And I'm the retail guy at the table. I haven't even bothered looking anything up right now. No, somebody hasn't been doing their job. Okay. Yes, I know. All right. All right. Our next product is going to be the Glen Goyne fifteen, and that's again forty three percent ABV. This is a 2013 gold medal winner at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. We've got a 20% sherry fill first fill cask. We've got 30% first fill bourbon cask and 50% refill cask. Um, this is this is one that honestly this is my favorite one of the range. Um, and the last time I tasted these, I tasted all of these in a row as well. And this one, for the money, this one really hit it for me. Um, it's got a great mouth feel to it. Um, the oils on this are very mouth coating. You know, it's got a it's got a really nice color to it. It's got a you know an, a, a sort of a light bronze. You're so fixated about color, Bob. Just so fixated. Just listen to the <laughs> listen, Alabama boy. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, nuts, nuts, nuts. nuts huge, here. Yeah. huge, huge. This, this one's for you, Bob. Nuttiness. Yeah. I mean, like. Like that, that, that bitter uh, walnut aroma. I mean, this thing is huge, loaded with almonds and walnuts. Um, got a great mouth feel to it. It's got a sweet citrus to it. Uh, toasted brown bread. Um, it's got a nice light finish on it. Uh, I, I can't think. I, I really can't say anything bad about this. I, I give this a solid four. I'm surprised you didn't go five. You were waxing poetic about it. He was waxing. You know poetic. me. Fives for me are very, very few and far between. It's yeah. got to be life altering to be five. This is a great whiskey, though. All I mean, right. It's been whiskey. a long time since we've had this many fours at the table. This is a, yeah. this, I don't think th- this is one of our best uh, distiller uh, takeovers. I've, uh, I've based on what we've tasted today. This is just a lot of uh, a lot of good high ratings. Well, I'm going to echo what uh, what Bob said, and that is, I really thought it was a major step up from the twelve. I love the viscosity on the palate. I thought it felt just fabulous in the mouth. Um, I agree with everything he said in terms of the the description, and I think uh, it really is a quintessential uh, 15-year-old Highland Scotch malt whiskey. Uh, just really terrific. The nuts really came through. Um, toffee, cinnamon, spice. It really just had everything. I think that this is a classic scotch and really will appeal to virtually any scotch drinker. And I give it a, I give it my very, very first five sips. All right. Oh, my goodness. Yes. 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 What do you think, Alan? Maury, I tend to agree with you. I think this is one of the most sophisticated whiskeys with tremendous balance that I've tasted you know during the course of this year the good part is I taste a lot of whiskeys but I think really? this you, you taste a whiskey or two Who yeah you guess? didn't give, yeah, on I, rare didn't give occasion. Alan an intro about on, his on rare occasion <laughs> Alan's, Alan's kind of famous in the business 
Yeah, but uh, don't listen to them. I just like to drink. He's famous at the post office as well, but we won't go there. <laughs> but no, this is a tremendously sophisticated, well-balanced whiskey. Uh, there are a lot of whiskeys that I love, and there are whiskeys that I like less. But I could agree on the quality of them. You know, the other part is just my own flavor profile. But this is a really fabulous whiskey. And would I choose it as my Desert Island whiskey? Probably not because I'm an Isla fan. But on the other hand, if a pallet of this fell on shore and I was on that Desert Island, you and Wilson I'd be, be one happy friends. son yeah. of a gun. Yep. All right. Well, uh, how, many, how many sips did you give it? I, I'll, I'll give this a five as well. I'll, I'll really oh, give it this five. I do have to uh, uh, do add something that uh, Harmeet had touched on, and that is that uh, we are actually privileged to have Alan with us today. Uh, although many of us consider us our, ourselves professionals, Alan has been in the Scotch uh, industry for quite some time. Uh, he's done an amazing job running one of the premier Scotch whiskey societies in the United States, and uh, hearing that from Alan really is inspiring and means quite a lot and should carry a lot of weight. Yep. As much as I love single cast, single malts, that's as much as I love blends, and that's as much as I love traditional single malts. They're all unique, they're all different, it, they have to be appreciated, and those who can let themselves open their minds to appreciate all whiskeys, this is one that you really need to appreciate. But baby, the whole elation riding down this lover's avenue As slow as a willow blows Or as fast as the world wind grows We glide beneath Stars in cobalt blue Look to the left To the right Keep your eyes on the road My darling Wondering if we're only Passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever Sweet love Our eyes are All right, and we're back. Uh, let's see what Harmeet thought about the 15. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, the 15-year-old. This is a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. I mean, it's a step up from the 12, but um, I don't know that I love it more than the 12. It's a different whiskey. To me, the nose was uh, lemon, and the nuttiness was there, but I got a hint of cocoa on there, and the palate, that mouthfeel was just, that was stunning. Uh, I gave it four sips. All right. I just, hey, you guys said everything there was to say about this whiskey. It's beautiful. All right. Get, go get a bottle, kids. All right. We'll have Maury talk about our next one. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Our next product is the Glen Goyne 18-year single malt, clocking in again at uh, 43% uh, ABV. It's a 2014 double gold medal winner at the San Francisco World Spirits competition. Uh, you'll notice a little bit of a change here. 35% first fill sherry casks, 15% um, first fill bourbon casks, and 50% refill casks. I like that they're doing the sherry more. I like yeah, that stuff. I do too. Uh, it's got a beautiful uh, medium gold color, and um, you get lots of interesting things on the nose. I thought predominantly I got brown sugar and uh, a little bit of tropical fruit. It's got, an, again, a really nice uh, mouthfeel. I thought it was fairly similar to the 15-year-old in, uh, in many respects. On the palate, I got uh, walnuts, warm spice, orange. Uh, I did get a little cocoa, uh, just as Harmeet noticed in the previous one. And it's got a lengthy, warm, dry uh, finish. I thought it was a beautiful whiskey. I thought it was well-balanced. Um, I thought it was very well-crafted. Uh, I'm not sure that I would spend the additional money over the 15. I thought it was very comparable to the 15, 
and if it were the same price i would definitely uh pick it up but uh in terms of dollars and value the 15 uh i think really so far has been the sweet spot for me i give this based on both price value and tasting a solid three sips interesting all right alan what'd you think this is one complex dram of whiskey um I love it for a lot of reasons. Uh, the cocoa that Harmit spoke about is probably the thing that resonates most in me. And the cocoa is not necessarily like a chocolatey cocoa. It's a, a powdered cocoa. Yeah, like so a judge cocoa, yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting cocoa at the back of my mouth. See, I got that in the last two whiskeys, and in, in the 18, I agree with you. This is, it's much more prominent here, but yeah. I did get that. I picked up on it, a hint of it on the last two, but here, like you're saying, it's up there. And I like the spiciness. It's got good spiciness. It's got good astringency to it. Uh, it's not, to me, I, I wouldn't call it like a, a heavily sherry-finished whiskey or anything like that. I'm not really noticing all that i have noticed sherry but not all that much sherry and it's great whiskey and i'm getting that dustiness in my mouth you know towards the end which tells me the cocoa part of it is very very good and i think that it's probably at its peak i think you know whiskey doesn't necessarily get better when it's older it just gets more expensive <laughs> and this eighteen year like this, wives. Eight, this yeah. eighteen year old is, is, is so terrific. Bad. It really is. There's no negatives yeah. towards it, but I I think it's at its epitome. Um, I love it. You know, I'll give it a four. I'm a younger whiskey drinker. Yeah, you you like the young whiskeys, and I'm gonna talk to your wife about like that. Eighteen uh, year olds are at the peak, right? <laughs> well, what she doesn't know doesn't hurt her. Yeah. Got a lot of listeners today, Alan. <laughs> anyway, she would appreciate it. Trust me. Are you kidding? She'd, been, yeah, she'd be. She'd be happy for the break. <laughs> no doubt about it. Any of you out there that are young and dumb, yeah, please call in. We'd love to talk to you. <laughs> All right, Harm. What do you think? I I like this whiskey a lot. I, I don't. There's not a bad whiskey on the table today, and and we've had bad whiskeys before. This let me tell you, there's not a bad whiskey today. Everything these guys produce, I've I've loved. Um, mm, one fireball. thing, fireball, fireball. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I uh, one thing I noticed is, you know, everyone's talking about the cocoa on this one, but I, I'm again, I'm the iconoclast. To me, what stood out for me on this whiskey was the fruit. When I smelled it, it was apples, and I got a huge hint of melon. There's a there's nice melon here. I mean, an 18 year old with nice melons. <laughs> Just saying. The FBI and Harmeet go very yes. far back on fruits. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank Get you. your mind out of the gutter, Harmeet. Yep. Yeah. Uh. But no, I love the nose, and I did get melon. I did get the brown sugar. Uh, afterwards. Uh, the, the first hit, it's the, the very when you, when you're when the nose is further away from the glass, that's when the lighter f- the fruit the melon comes out. You get in there deeper. It's marzipan, it's the cocoa, and on the palate, it was that nuttiness, the almonds, the walnuts, the cocoa, the orange, and I love this long finish. It was beautiful long finish, and I give it a f- solid four sips. So what you're saying is, me love you long time. Uh, okay, yeah. 18 year old with melons long time yep the whole thing let's do it go all the go all the way in yeah, I, I, I you know hallelujah 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 <laughs> yeah this is this is this is an excellent whiskey I mean there I, I can't really say a bad thing about this um, the color on it is beautiful um, I definitely pick up a lot of the fruit I pick up a lot of the cocoa note a um, little bit of uh, citrus I pick up the uh, sort of the dry bitterness of almonds in it um rich ripe fruits got a great finish to it um you know really I, I you know i might maybe increase the number of bourbon casts that they're they're putting into this but other than that i i i, I can't think of anything to really make it any better i give it a solid four That's classified. 
All right. All right, kids. Right. We're to our last product, which is the Glen Goyne 21 year. You want Alan to do this one? Yeah, Let's we're going to have out. Alan do that one. So, Okay, let me pour some into a glass because that's the only way to do it properly. Oh, do it live, Alan. Do it live. Do it live. Okay, so I'm pouring a, a right small if, sample. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just take some yeah. Thank you. Okay, just don't put it in your pocket, Harvey. You know, leave it on the table. All right. Fine. Okay, so right. let's talk about the more. The 21-year-old. Now, this is a majority of uh, whiskey that was aged in first fill sherry casks. Uh, personally, I am not a big lover of sherry casks. And I am you know, out of, of society because most people love whiskey aged in sherry casks because it gives them mellowness and it gives it extra fruit and it gives just a lot of great things. But I am going to close my eyes, and I'm going to taste it blind. Not that I'm blind drunk, but I may be in a few minutes. And I'm going to taste this blind, and I'm going to give you my honest interpretation. I, I don't think he knows what tasting blind means, but you're tasting. You know well, what you're That was tasting. really horrible. Oh, you're always complaining. <laughs> Darn. This actually is very, very good. The sherry is not overpowering. And that's a problem I have with sherry age whiskeys. Most of them are overpowering. They're you, unbalanced. They're unbalanced. You can't get the the feel and the taste of the whiskey because there's just too much sherry on it. Not you know, not that sherry's bad. I like smoke. But this one has really a well balanced amount of sher- of sherry to it. And this is the second time I'm tasting it, and it tastes a lot better the second time I'm on. Maury, Maury turned me down for a sip last time. He's just opening it up again now, thanks to your review. That's yeah. good. Yeah, and you know what? You know, I I have a, a personal feeling about whiskey. If it makes your mouth pucker, it's over the hill. Too much tannin. Too much tannin. This one doesn't make your mouth pucker. That cocoa flavor, or I don't know if it's a cocoa flavor or if it's just that feeling in your mouth is there. My mouth doesn't pucker. Talking about the dustiness. Yeah, yeah, the dustiness. And this is great. This is just phenomenal. I, I think it's awesome. Yeah. All right, kids. You guys were uh, were passing out the fours and uh, one one five here for Maury today. This is my five uh, my five sip whiskey today. Oh my goodness! Yes! 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 All right, a hundred percent sherry cask. Everything sherry cask. But and the most of it's first fill. But I think the balance here is because they use some second fill. They had they didn't over sherry. It's not a hundred percent first right. fill. Not a hundred percent sherry. It's, I mean it's hundred percent sherry. But it's not a hundred percent first fill. There is some second fill, probably some maybe even third fill barrels here to bring down that uh, overpowering sherry that Alan dis- dislikes. But frankly, I like good sherry whiskey. I'm in the majority of the public there, and it just it it hit every. Every little check mark, everything I wanted. It's apples and rich leather and and like almost like a suede note, uh, fresh suede jacket, toffee, sherry. There's fruit cake. It's freaking great. And then on the palate, the sherry's there. But I got rose petals. I got dried fruit. And uh, when I added water, the fruit just came out. I mean, I only ordered a few few drops. We talk about water and no water all the time, but just a few drops on this and. It was great, and with the tannic finish since twenty, it is twenty one years in oak. I think it did appreciate the water a little bit more. It did bring down the tannin some, and the finish just got longer. This is this is all the way five for me. So I, I already said it was five. You have to yep. trust, don't don't play the sound effects. Again. Just have another drink. Yeah. All right. What do you think, Maury? Well, I do have to agree. Um, I think it's a phenomenal whiskey. I think that um, I, I too am a sherry cask fan. The fact that it's 100% sherry cask shines through, and I would agree with the previous comments from both Alan and Harmeet. It's not overly sherried, and again, I believe that he uh, Harmeet is correct that it's the the very nice blend of both first fill and non first fill sherry casks. I love the color. It's got the nicest, deepest color of all of them. It definitely oh, it's has a gorgeous hint of copper. Gorgeous. 
Um, and again, that's all natural since they're not adding any caramel. There's there's a lot of red glints in that. That's not just copper. That's like yeah. deeper and yeah. redder. Like yeah, old bronze. Just yeah, yeah, it's, yeah just, it's, it's just beautiful. It's it's lovely. Um, and, and I agree. I love the toffee, the sherry notes, the dried cherries. There is a little bit of fruit cake up uh, on the nose, and on the palate, it's got just a little bit of everything. Um, it's just a really wonderful, beautiful whiskey. This is a special occasion whiskey at really uh, not it's, such special occasion price. It's under 200 I think. So we, yeah. we talked about, uh, and Maury mentioned value for price and a lot of times, but we never talked about the retail of any of these whiskeys. But we'll... we'll we can bring that up. We 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 can we we have the prices in Florida. I don't know wherever you live. We don't know what it costs, but uh, we'll we'll have the prices later. But uh, but I uh, think for an under two hundred dollar retail under whiskey, yeah. this drinks like a very expensive whiskey. It's a beautiful whiskey. It's well balanced. If you like sherry, and uh, I recognize that some people like a much more heavily peated whiskey. I think this is probably the quintessential sherryed uh, whiskey. Uh, so I gave it a solid four sips. All right. The, does no one know the irony here? This is the second time he's used the, used the word quintessential today. I've been counting. Second time quintessential for you, but you that's quintessence, the fifth essence. Mm-hmm. You've given both of your quintessential whiskeys four, four sips. You're drinking too much. spell quintessential, please. I think we have to take another look at this. You know, of course, this is a very, very good whiskey. What we need here to compare it with is some very, very bad women. So any of you that are listening, please call in because you'll meet the most wonderful guys that you'll ever meet in your Al- life. Alan is just itching for trouble. Yeah, that's his life. That's his you middle want name. To, you, you, before we have an intervention for Alan, Bob, what did you think? Well, I'm just sitting here thinking, Maury's waxing poetic over something that has no bourbon casks in it whatsoever. You're, you're, and he's a bourbon guy. Your, your mafia card has been revoked. Uh, I, I've got to agree with with all you guys I, I think not going 100% first fill sherry definitely was the way to go on this one uh, you know there's I I like all whiskeys I, I, I take them for what they are I like light whiskeys I like heavily peated I like medium peated I like high one you know I, I, I appreciate them for what they are I have a hard time with the lowland stuff but there's some even even ones. the lowland stuff it, it may not be the first thing that I grab but uh, you know I have loads of alcohol in it yeah it's yeah, yeah. exactly but it's uh, a- Alan has his priorities yeah I you know I, I try to appreciate it for what it is and you know I love an Iowa but it's not the first thing I always grab and it's I, and I somebody pointed out to me I I never drink it alone no. I only drink it when people people are around and if i had people who were into it oh we'll go through you know large quantities of it but no, uh, if i'm doing peated whiskey it's the the ending whiskey yeah. of the night it's, yeah you oh, well, yeah you always do that at the end but still it's but you this know, whiskey Bob. appreciate it for what it is but this whiskey i think they had just the right amount of sherry on it i and think any more would have would have made it too sweet too cloying i think it would have taken it way too far and every one of their whiskeys no peat whatsoever air dried and i still I still really liked it. Yeah, I, you know, so so this you could drink alone, Bob. I mean, it's got a great sherry. It's got some toffee. It's got. It's <laughs> Maury's trying to get Bob to drink alone. Yeah. <laughs> Two ways. Hey, if you guys were listening to Jim Cramey, he would go bye bye bye. <laughs> yeah, great great whiskey. I, you know, I, I give it a good solid four. Um, you know, I can't All say right. a bad thing about it. Um, you know, so what did you guys think about the line? I thought the line was really spectacular. There were no bad whiskeys today. Not at all. I think we're splitting hairs to find some subtleties and differences among them. Uh, I think wherever your uh, budget allows, you can't pick a bad whiskey from the line. No, Glenn, Glenn Goins, where it's at. I, I, I only, ha- I wish they just brought us the 25 year old man. What's up with that? Alan, you know where we can get some 25 year old Glenn Goins? <laughs> well, I do have a few casts hidden here and there of it. And I'm happy to make it available at the right price. But I will say this. The distillery label whiskeys are fabulous. I enjoyed them tremendously. Uh, they are as good as every great whiskey that I know of from Scotland. And you're not, you're not going to like it unless you try it. So enjoy. Well, that's all the time we have today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can catch all of our episodes online as well as on SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, PRX, and Spreaker, our native media host. iTunes, Google Play, and our own Android app are the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone. 
Just search Sip Sud Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. We love your feedback, so please reach out to us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at Sip Suds and Smokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. Do us a favor and please rate this episode if you're listening to us on uh, Google Play or for iTunes. Uh, we're, you know, we're, your, your ratings are a, a big help to us, and we enjoy your feedback. I want to thank our co-hosts for joining us today. Thank you, Harmeet. Thank you. Maury? As always, a pleasure, Bob. Alan? Hey, it was my pleasure being here today. Anything that gets me out of the house is good. <laughs> well, we'll offer you more 18-year-olds, Alan. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Army. I love your taste in great whiskey. <laughs> All right, that's it for this episode of Sid Suds and Smokes. And this is Man Mad Bob, and we thank you for joining us. Remember, life is too short to drink cheap whiskey. Amen. Tan Hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>